Okay then, good evening and uh, welcome along to uh, SAFC Fan TV and another edition of the Sunday Bunch. Uh, the lads are back, we're all back together. Uh, nobody's <coughs> crafting, we're all off, we're all here. Nobody's decorating the house, right like that. So the lads are back together. So with myself tonight, with myself, we Philly, we've got Jacob Kirkbride, we have Dino, we've got Michael Balance, we have Sean Middleton and the Mad Mistake settled in his new house, all the lads are back. Hey, woo! Uh, once again, don't forget uh, to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, when you're watching, uh, hit the thumbs up. Give us a like if you like what you see. Give us a thumbs down if you don't like it. And we are available on the live chat. Uh, if you would like to uh, join in the show, just send us a message and we'll do our best uh, to try and give you a shout out. Already on the live chat, Stephen Hill stands. Uh, on their Midnight Social, David Walker, Joe Eleven, Casey Cameron, Jude, uh, Uber, Macam FC, <laughs> David Algard, uh, SAFC, Dave, Jack Dodds, already uh, on the chat. There you go. Um, so we, we are going to kick off with uh, the Mansfield game uh, yesterday, the FA Cup <laughs> game, uh, Sunderland nil, Mansfield won. Uh, before I do, though, uh, when I'm out delivering me parcels, I'm amazed at how many people stop us and say we love the show and it's a great show <coughs> for that. so thank you to you lot. and especially special mention uh, to Joe Dodd from Swindon Square in uh, Springwell whose wife uh, came out of the van and says my husband watches the Sunday Bunch every week and he loves us all so Joe Dodd big <coughs> one for Joe Dodd thanks for tuning in and watching so Sunderland nil, Mansfield Town 1 and we'll, I think we'll start off with Jacob, I think. Jacob, was it a disaster or what? Uh, yeah, for me, honestly, just um, considering the fact before kickoff, this was against a team who were third from bottom of the Football League, had not won a game all season. <clears> I know <throat> people can say Phil Parkinson, he made eight changes, but come on, like we should be putting teams away like Mansfield Town at home. I think, you know, because... We've been crying out for Phil Parkinson to make a lot of changes o over the period of games we've had. And now he's finally made those changes. I wonder what he's thinking about some of these players now who don't get regular starts in the first team. To be honest, I'm expecting a big reaction from some of those players away at Fleetwood in the Papa John's Trophy on Tuesday night. But just the before, we, we never really looked like scoring until we brought Charlie Wyke on. Uh, Danny Graham missing a sitter in the first half, uh, hitting the woodwork twice. But that one where the ball came across, um, he's, he's surely got to put that in. Surely you expect the striker to finish that. If Wyke was on the pitch, he would have buried that. Um, the only bright spark was probably uh, Callum McFanzie. I, I know I said on social media I wasn't impressed at all with his interview after the game. I thought it was... Uh, very poor wording from from his part, but credits where it's due. Um, he was probably our only player that looked like he was going to do something every time he got the ball yesterday. But over our passing yesterday was awful to watch, absolutely terrible. And fans can say, yeah, this is just one game. Um, it's it's an FA Cup game. I don't want to be involved in the cups this season but for me it, it, it's poor attitude I, I just don't like it there's just something about I, I can never get my head around it honestly I can't I'm sorry um right okay uh quickly to the chat uh uh Sean's last uh Joanne Punchin uh says hi to us all so hi Joanne uh thanks very much um uh, Andrew Robbins serial online shopper uh yesterday was the final straw for me uh, with Parkinson, I think it's going a bit far myself that. But uh, uh, let's move on to uh, to Dino. Dino, what did you think? Um, I watched the first <laughs> half. I turned the second half off. I was I was bored. I was bored of watching it. Oh, oh, I don't blame him. Oh, shut up, man. <laughs> I really right. don't blame him. Right, put it put it this way, right? The first half. I mean. Danny Graham, I've always, I've actually I've said this. We've got the worst strike force probably in the league. Bar Charlie White scoring goals, he's doing well for himself. We've put you wanted to see Graham and Greg up front together, and what did they do? Jack oh. fuck all, right? Oh. Danny Graham, Mister Sitter, he was under the bar and somehow still hit the bar. It was like a defender's clearance. I don't know how he didn't score it. Finally hit the post. That's quite unlucky, I would say. But other than that, we didn't really make we didn't create much chances and. People are saying we played badly. 
Yeah, but that was because of Mansfield. Mansfield were pressing with Mansfield. It was like the Mansfield's Cup final. That's what it felt like. It felt like them wanted the game much more than us. New manager but, effect. But, yeah, and like you say, new manager effect. I mean, Nigel Clough, good manager. Let's be fair, he is. I would have had him over Parkinson every day of the week. <clears throat> um, but he's went to Mansfield and it's no shot that his first game. He's won the fucking, won the game against with 1-0. Um, but, like... I mean, the centre midfield partnership of Dobson Power doesn't work. They don't do anything. They're so negative. I mean, when I turned out, like South Shields were playing against Cheltenham, and I thought I'm going to put I'm going to put that on. I want to I want to see what South because I've never seen South Shields on the telly apart from when the one that uh, Vars Cup final. No, it's it's uh, it's got a, a lovely beach and a coastline. South Shields would say. Yeah, I know. I live there. I know. I live there. But um, oh, sorry, all right. I, I was watching the South Shields game and I seen something. Something don't do. They don't go forward. Um, they don't go yeah. forward enough. Everything sideways and backwards. When I was watching South Shields in the second half, they were going forward. They were making positive movements. They were actually playing it from the back as well. Like I didn't really see the keeper hoof the ball up. He was actually playing it out from the back. And the centre midfielders were positive. They were getting forward. They were getting shots. Um, the striker was getting like getting through balls to his feet. And I'm watching Sonnen going was slow. We're negative, we're sideways, we're backwards. And this is coming from a team who's not even a... Prof- I don't even think they're a professional team. They're a semi-pro team. So if I'm watching Shields and I'm going, wow, the, the positive, and I'm watching Sunderland going, we're negative. I mean, that just shows the mentality of what Parkinson's doing and what the players are doing. They're not going forward enough. And don't get us wrong, I'm not losing my head over the defeat. I've always said any, it can be any... T- I mean, <laughs> Chelsea got beat off Bradford 4-2 in an FA Cup. Couple of couple of seasons ago, and Bradford were probably in League One at the time. You do get results like these in the FA Cup. That's why people love the FA Cup because teams in lower leagues can beat the teams higher than them, and that's just what's happened. Why is everyone losing their head about it? Hopefully, we we'll play come against MK Dons and win them. Right. Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. You watched those Shields and they were attacking. <laughs> um, it's just that's the way we play under Parkinson. And if we play like that, yeah, it's not pretty to watch, but if it's effective and gets the results, then so so what. But on the chat here, uh, Chris Scott says, one of the worst uh, results in our history. Uh, David Walker, party out. Um, uh, Jeff Holcroft, better off out of the club. The league's a priority. Uh, Jack Dodds, I agree with Dino's tweet yesterday that the response has been ridiculous. Uh, it's obvious that we're not taking it seriously. So uh, somebody agrees with you there. Uh, well, Jack, who was on, uh, agrees with you there, uh, Dino. <coughs> um, all right, uh, Sean, well, what did you think of yesterday then? Eight changes. Uh, we've, we've wanted the kids in and they've had a go. You know, is it that is it that bad that we're at the FA Cup? Well, I'm not going to like um, excuse the, the performance because... As, as the lads have said, it's, it's unacceptable. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you, you can never go into a game wanting to lose, but I, I'd start had that sort of feeling that um, the, the, the team weren't taking it serious at all. It's as if they're sort of seeing um, there's bigger fish to fire this thing. Um, I do agree that um, the, the the league was, uh, that's 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 the most important. But you'd expect to beat Mansfield with third from bottom in the uh, the fourth tier of English football. I hadn't won a game. Um, obviously, Graham Cotton got sacked. And when he got sacked, and then Nigel Clough got announced um, a couple of days before the game, I, what I said yesterday was a side what was um, trying to prove to the manager um, that they want to be in, in that team. And that, I think, you know, it's, 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 it's pathetic excuses, really. I mean, we should be taking uh, care of, of sides like Mansfield, and then players should be ashamed of themselves, to be fair. They were absolutely pathetic. Max Power, <laughs> and I've seen better footballers. Um, on a Sunday, Sunday league football, honestly, they're absolutely pathetic footballers. Them two, pathetic, useless footballers. Um, but to the whole team was just the, you know disjointed; they weren't really at it. Um, but full credit to Mansfield, you know, they were the better side for me. They deserved to win the game, and you know, I respected them, and I, and well, I love them them well in the, in the next round. You know, I'm, I'm not bitter as Terry thinks I am sometimes, but you know. Um, you know, Mansfield were the better side and they, they did deserve to win the game. So congratulations to them. Um, for me, um, Partinson made your changes. I don't think even blame Partinson. There was a lot of people blaming Partinson on social media last night. I think the <coughs> changes, uh, people uh, complain and say, well, um, why are you not giving the youngsters a chance? They give all the, the fringe players a chance. Did they uh, take that chance? They, they, they absolutely didn't. They were pathetic. Um, and it's a bit worrying, to be fair. I mean, 
Um, and I didn't, he didn't start Dan Neil. Uh, could he have started him? Maybe he probably, probably started him on Tuesday. But you know, it's a bad defeat. I was, you know, I was angry yesterday. But when you think about this, I mean, it's, a, it's a, <coughs> I'm, I'm like making excuses. It's, it's not acceptable. You know, the, you know, getting beat off Mansfield, not being disrespectful. But to be fair, I mean, I put a tweet up yesterday. If we get promoters, does it really matter? I mean, it's a, for me, it's a less. It's another less distraction going forward. I mean, the AFL trophy on Tuesday, I'm not bothered about that either. Couldn't give two shits about it. Um, the league is what all that matters. Parkinson gets a lot of flack, but he played the team when he thought was going to win. He made eight changes. Then players were gutless and spineless and pathetic. And not put less down yesterday. Not Parkinson, the player. <coughs> uh, right, OK. Um, uh, Jack Dodd says Sean is bang on. Uh, Joanne will be loving his intelligent uh, reaction. Down there, probably. Uh, fans react. Uh, of course, uh, Paul Magum tweets there, says, uh, to me, does it not concern us that the French players uh, are not there to back of us, back us up, that they were poor? Uh, that includes Dobson and Power. Uh, for me, uh, Power, I think, has only sort of really gone off the boil. Uh, so the last few games, I thought he's he's had some some all right games this season. I know Sean won't agree with that, but um, maybe they're just going through through a bad spell. Um, so uh, mad mistake. What what do you think to uh, yesterday? Is it that bad that that we've gone out of the FA Cup or what? Disappointing on the day. I, I wanted a, a decent FA Cup run. Like everybody, everybody wants to 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 win the cup at some point in the history, but obviously we're never going to win it with this side. But there's one thing that comes out of this match and it's brilliant to see is that Powell and Dobson cannot ever, ever, ever play together again in the history of some football club. They cannot play together. They're not a partnership. They're both negative. You need someone to go forward, someone to sit back. You kind of play those two together. Dobson's a League Two player. Power, he's all right, but with Dobson, he looks terrible. So uh, too slow, too negative. Teams are just going to laugh when those two come on the park because they can just sit back and just do whatever they want because they're that slow. And whenever they get the ball, power passes the ball back, never goes forward until the last 20 minutes when we're under pressure. Did he play the kids? No, he played Diamond. That's the only kid he played. Diamond, again, was the only one with a bit of pace on the side. He did drive with the ball at times, but his final pass was Pui yesterday as well. McFadden, for me, was the shining light of the whole team. I thought he looked promising on the left-hand side. He looked like an intelligent footballer. He tried to get past players. He got in the box, had a couple of shots off, a couple of good passes for an unfit player. For me, that's the one shining light. And I thought McLaughlin and the centre-backs, the centre-backs, the center backs, McLaughlin played OK as well. Sanderson, floppy. Uh, Matthew was very flappy with the crosses. He was flapping at the balls and he nearly punched the ball in his own net at one time. And we've got the likes of Grig and Graham. I was disappointed with Grig yesterday. I mean, I, I take back what I said about Grig all season. Yesterday with his opportunity and he completely blew it. He never looked in the match, didn't he? Look like he wanted to try. He showed no enthusiasm on the pitch. Graham's old and slow and he had a couple of chances to score and he missed his chances as well. So that partnership is no good up front. And uh, to be honest, when I, I eat my own words, I take it all back. Charlie White is our best striker we have. I, I've seen it now. I've seen it. I've watched all three play. And if that's all Griggs had to offer yesterday, then, then he can stay on the bench for me. Disappointing. Embleton, come on. He needs more game time. Looks sharp. Looks, it looks like he's, he's ready to get amongst it. White, like I said, White came on <clears throat> for me. Just leave him on the bench because we need him for the league. We can't get him injured in any cup matches. He shouldn't even be in the squad in the, in the checker trade dot dot com Papa, Papa John's, John's pizzas <laughs> dominate Domino's pizzas dot com flipping competition <laughs> you know, know Charlie White on the bench we need Charlie White fit he's got to stay fit all season and that's saying something if we rely on Charlie White and to do he's done well this season so far and Aidan O'Brien what on earth has happened to Aidan O'Brien he looked absolutely awful, shocking eh? yesterday woeful his last touch trying to shoot terrible kicking fresh air couldn't get past his man again. He's slow, goes backwards. The whole team yesterday was such a disappointment. Like I said, Mac Fadzen and McLaughlin were the only two for me that came out of it. And Clough wasn't even the manager. He was, he was in the stand, like, like, like Sean said. The team got up for it. But, I mean, our man's failed league two. We should be taking these teams apart, regardless what side we play. But it's just one thing that proves the point now. Our fringe players are just not good enough. Simple as. Um. Yeah, I, I believe uh, Nigel Clough wasn't in charge, but there was still that um, that thing of people wanting to impress him. I, 
I would imagine. I mean, I, I know I'd said about, uh, you know, we, we tried the kids, uh, which was a wrong statement for me to me. I know there was eight changes. I mean, I hold my hands up. I didn't see the game yesterday. I was grafting uh, and I just had, uh, I just had uh, Sean, uh, Sean Michael and, and Conrad uh, as I'm in and out of the van. So I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, pussy fun around it in a way. Uh, on the chat, Conrad is loving uh, Jacob's retro shirt down there. A uh, bit of a loving. Um, uh, it says Danny as well. Uh, Jack Dodds, who we had on the show, Terry's right. He'd rather have Donald and Jacqueline of Benidorm running the midfield than uh, than them two, than uh, Dobson and uh, and Power. Uh, Mad Mac and Mad Mistake and Sean talking sense. Um, so I think we. Um, I think we all sort of uh, agree on. I mean, you're right in what you say. The fringe players are, you know, are probably not good enough. So we've got to pray everybody stays fit. Uh, Michael, uh, we've gone out of the FA Cup. You know, is it is it such a bad thing? In the grand scheme of things, no, I don't think it is. Um, I've made my feelings. But to be honest, last night I went, well, on Twitter in particular, I couldn't be bothered with the meltdown that was going on on Twitter. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to back off and stay away from Twitter for now because I was getting quite um, pissed off looking at it. Um, Right, let's get one thing clear. I'm not bothered about the result, but I, however, I think people have every right to dis be disgruntled about that performance. People can say fringe players aren't good enough. How way? They should be good enough to beat Mansfield Town. Let's not kid ourselves here. Um, they, they should have been good. That team should easily have been good enough to go and beat Mansfield. But in fairness, like we said on the live stream, Mansfield were up for it more, wanted it more, got the buzz from Nigel Clough, deserved the win, should have probably won by a couple more goals. Um, the biggest disappointment for me coming out of the game was that all those fringe players and even and even to an extent some of the youth like Diamond and all that had a chance to impress and really force their way into Parkinson's mind for the league games didn't take it didn't bother to take it um, it was quite clear looking at the game that we weren't overly fussed about the res weren't overly fussed about going through which no actually I wouldn't say no as a professional football you should be wanting to win the, the, the couple of things that have been said that I do disagree with is that um, the thing on Graham and Greg I've said that I've wanted them to. And yes, they didn't do anything yesterday. But yeah, but I wanted them with our first team squad. I wanted to see what they could do with our first team squad. Not with like, as you said, I think power's all right when you've got him with Scowen and Ledbetter. But in a two, he can't do it. I, I think I've got to accept that now. He cannot do it in a two. It's too much burden for him to try and dictate the midfield and he doesn't do it. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to bully George Dobson. I've done that enough already. I've, I'm not going to kick a dead horse with that. Um, the, the attitude thing about... Go on, go on. Cool. No, I'm not going I'm not going to be that mean. <laughs> later on. Um, the, the thing I don't get though is people having a go at people saying they're not bothered throughout the cup. Well, no, for me it's looking at the bigger picture. It's not saying that you're not bothered about go I look, yeah, I'm I'm not particularly I'm not losing sleep that we've gone out of the FA Cup, but that the, the reason that we're not bothered is probably because we're looking at the bigger picture. We're looking at <laughs> we're looking at the bigger picture of the season. It's like, you know, if we go in a good FA Cup run stay in League 1, what good does that mm -hmm. do for the cup? Absolutely nothing. So but yeah, the, the, the fringe players didn't take their chances. Greg, to an extent, I thought had no service to work off yesterday, but he also didn't do enough either. He just looked like he was laboring around on the pitch. Graham, like whatever, whatever people's opinions on Graham, you've got to be scoring those chances. He's had a couple of chances that Charlton should be scoring. And I agree with my mistake. As much as I don't, technically, I don't think White's our best striker at the minute, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. He's head and shoulders and showing the most up front of everyone else. McFadden, and I've probably got that name wrong, so I apologize. He was the best player on the park for me. Um, he was one one that was looking to get forward. I thought Diamond on the ball looked quite promising, but he also got bullied far too often. And you can say, oh, that was his first Sunderland game. Well, no, he's played at Harrogate, who, and the conference level is probably a physical battle every week, week in, week out, game in, game out. So there's no excuse for me for Diamond to look as out of place as he did. But in saying that, he's not in his natural position. He's not a wing back. He's not a full back. So Parkinson, and I actually agree with Sean to, um, on Parkinson that I think. Calls for Parkinson to go based on this game, I don't particularly agree with, but everyone's got their own opinion. That's fair enough. Uh, but that yesterday wasn't on Parkinson for me. That was on the players. The players had the job to go out and beat Mansfield, who, as everyone has said, hadn't won a game before yesterday. Um, and they didn't do it. You know, what, what good does that look for their prospects? If, you know, if we'd have, so as much as I'm not bothered about the results, the performance everyone's got every right to be gruntled with because it wasn't good enough. Um. Right, OK. Uh, back to the chat then. Uh, Wayne Duran says, uh, spot on, Sean and Terry. Exactly right. He totally agrees with you. Um, and from that, um, we could have a little bit of a, 
um, something going on here between Sean and Wayne Duran because uh, Joanne Punchin <laughs> says, hi, Wayne, with two love hearts and three kisses. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Sean will be trying to find out uh, Wayne's address uh, and he'll be round knocking <laughs> on your door. <laughs> uh, Taffy Mackham. Tabby Magum says, uh, the biggest disappointment was uh, seeing the lack of effort from uh, from Greg. Uh, Jack Dodd says, uh, Greg doesn't even look bothered. Uh, Casey Cameron Jude, uh, agree with Terry. Uh, Aidan O'Brien was terrible. Yeah, he was. Uh, as well. He couldn't even, couldn't even pass the ball. Um, so I was going to come on to, uh, uh, to Greg, seeing as you mentioned him. Uh, again, you know, I didn't see... You know, I didn't see the game and I thought, you know, Will Grigg, um, was it actually, has he missed a golden opportunity? Because you think he's going to come on and say, right, this is my chance. I've got to show you that, you know, you should be picking me uh, for the first team. Did he miss a golden opportunity or was he just not giving the service? I don't know. So, uh, Sean, you want to go first? You know what? Yesterday, right, and, and our people cr criticised Grigg, but to be fair, uh, did he actually have a... Have, have, have any chances? I mean, if you if you you're a striker, right? You look back. If you look back in midfield, you've got Dobbs, uh, Dobson, and Power. You look back, you're going to go straight away. Oh, no, I'm not getting any service here. Do you know what I mean? So, to be fair, in, in, in the in, in all the time in the game, when did when did Greg actually get a chance? And people now people say, well, good strikers can get uh, get a goal out of nothing. But if there's nothing coming at, at all, how are you going to score a goal? I mean, uh, Graham got two chances. He um, hit the hit the woodwork twice. But Greg's attitude, I'm not, I'm not like in there, Greg's, he's like, he's persona about him. He's, he doesn't seem like he just, he, he, he seems disinterested. And he, like, in pre-season, he looked like he was willing to give the season a, a, a good a good, uh, a good go at it. But then I watched him yesterday and it's the old Will Greg. It's just like, well, I couldn't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? It's basically, I've, I've got a good wage. I'm not bothered. So that, that, that's what it was coming across. Like I said, but on the other side of it, he didn't get any service. And if you're not getting any service, you're not going to score any goals. It's as simple as that. Uh, right, fair enough. Uh, we'll come to you in a sec, J uh, Jacob. I just want to uh, quickly go to the chat. Uh, Alan P. Thompson on the chat says, uh, Sean, have a word with Wayne. Um, uh, <laughs> we were saying you, you, was, you would be trying to find his address. Um, Joanne, Joanne Punchin has come back on, said, Philly, I give everyone kisses. In that case, then we want your address and we'll all be around. <laughs> Uh, we'll all be around to oh, collect our kisses. going to be happy about this. <laughs> Karen will be in in a sec. She'll be giving me Apologies, what for. Um, um, right, so uh, Jacob, you wanted uh, you wanted in on that. Yeah, with Will Not the Grigg... kisses, not the kisses. No, no. We'll be right up here. <laughs> no. uh, with Will Grigg, I know, I understand Sean's point about us <laughs> not, in, not putting enough balls into the box for him to get on the end of yesterday, but when you watch him play now, his, his whole attitude and demeanour, there was times even in that game yesterday, like running on to second ball. If you're not going to get on the end of crosses and the crosses are not being put in, at least show commitment to like run on to loose balls and try and like help your teammates out in the best way you can. And I know, it's, was it, I understand Sean saying um, he's looking behind him, he's got <laughs> jobs and a max power to provide him the service. Let's be honest, this is not the same max power that played with Will Grigg in that Wigan team where Will Grigg before Euro 2016, when he was put in the Northern Ireland squad scored, I think like 25 goals that season, something like that. But Will Grigg, um, I, I still think he'll be part of the squad on Tuesday night because I think Parkinson will want a big reaction out of some of those players considering how poor they were yesterday. But after that, I'll be very, very surprised if we see him kick a ball for Sunderland again, to be honest. I think, getting him off the wage bill in January if I think is 100% the right thing to do because that could free up funds for us to bring players in and we need that right now but who would want to buy Will Grigg at the moment it's just it's all at, but you know it the most Sunderland thing to happen he will go to another league one team and he will start scoring it's, it's written in the script right yeah. um well I've got a quick uh, question for you all I've uh, got a bet on uh, for Will Grigg to be top scorer, League One's <laughs> top scorer, My and I've got. God. Well, listen, let me let me finish. All if right. he goes to another team. Let, well, no, no, no. All I want to <laughs> say is, I've got a cash in value of thirty eight pence. I'm my best to cash it in. Do you think? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. God. Um, right. Anyway, um, 
Right, so, uh, Will Greg, uh, back to the chat then quickly. Um, <clears throat> Chris Scott says, um, at least uh, Virgil van Wyk manages <laughs> to get uh, manages to get chances. So, is it about is it about making uh, your own chances? Uh, Jack Dodds, uh, Greg's attitude for him is nothing short of disgusting. Uh, yeah, Taffy great. Mackham says uh, to Sean, uh, he wasn't even chasing 50-50s, uh, apparently. So um, that, that's on the chat. Um, mad mistake, you want to come in? Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, Greg probably will start on Tuesday night and he probably should start on Tuesday night. But I, I want to see some more younger players play on Tuesday night. I don't want to see Power and Dobson playing. I don't want to see you know, McLaughlin or Flanagan playing or you Maguire's. I want to see some younger, I want to see Dan Neil playing or younger or some other players or players playing, you know, but Will Greg yesterday, there was just no like, he should be barking out instructions to the midfield to give him the ball. He's just inside his shell. He's gone in his shell. He's quiet. He's not bothered. He's not, like I say, he's not chasing a lost cause. He's not busting a gut. When Charlie White come on the pitch, he was getting the ball straight away in the penalty box and a few touches. Will Griggs just never in them situations. He's always up wide on the left somewhere. And he's just, for me, if I was the striker, I'd be shouting at my midfield players, get me the bloody ball. And he just, he's not bothered. He's not interested. So I need to see a big change from Will Grigg. I understand what Michael says about having a better Stop midfield, <laughs> supplying them, supplying them Will Grigg with some better sort of, you know, some better assists and things. But if he's not going to try in these matches, then what's the point of him even being on the bench? Yeah. To be fair, get somebody else, give somebody else a chance. Thank you. I've just been getting wrong off my wife. That's all. She come in and tell me off. Go I away. thought I was here with a ghost away. or something. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, like you said on Tuesday night, um, you know, you'd like to see some of the young ones get a chance. I agree. Um, the Will Greg thing for me is, you know, as he... <coughs> You know, he's one chance he gets. Is he expected to turn it on on that one game? You know, you, you've got to be given more of a chance to that for me. Just uh, saw some drive, some drive. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Dino, what, what do you think? Uh, was it a golden opportunity missed for Will Greg? Or is, are we being a bit unfair? And should he at least, you know, Charlie Wyke, you know, wasn't scoring. And then he got his run of games and Charlie Wyke's doing it now. Uh, so what do you think? Um, see for me with Will Greg, I mean, he was banging them in on pre-season, confidence high, and then he doesn't really get a chance at the start of the season, which has probably knocked his confidence dead low. He's seen Charlie Wyke getting goals even lower. And then he's seen Danny Graham, who's 38 or how old he is, getting over, right. starting over him. So his confidence will be at an all-time low, but he's not doing himself any favours. I mean, like like the uh, mad mistake said, Wyke comes on. And he's getting the ball straight away. Why isn't Grigg doing that? Because Grigg's not putting himself in them positions. I mean, I think Grigg's just a lost cause now. I mean, we were shouting for him to be starting. He's 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 he started against a team who are low on league two. You should be you should be shining if you're a good striker. You should be shining against the league two side who's in the relegation zone. And he's and he hasn't done it. Fine, he's not getting the service, but you've got to try and get the service, drop deeper, get the ball, turn, make space, do runs, but you don't see him doing none of that. It's like he's just he's doing it at about 50%. And uh, to be honest, I think he wants to, he will want to wait. And I think it's time for us to just get rid because, I've, like I've said, I, f I do believe we've got the some of the worst strikers in the league, bar Charlie Wikes, like actually come into form. It, but if Charlie White gets injured, do you have any faith in any of the other strikers getting any goals? Because I don't. Nah. Well, I think uh, I think it's probably more worrying that people are saying, um, you know, he's not put the effort in, really. Like you said, uh, Dino, you know, he should be maybe tracking back and, and making chances for himself. Uh, on the chat, very quickly, uh, Joe Eleven uh, says he's a Bolton fan and they drew 1-1 with Mansfield. Uh, and on Saturday, uh, Mansfield... Uh, look to a different team about us. But that's just a classic thing of, uh, yeah. you know, lower teams up in the game against against the higher team. Uh, Terry, you want in there? Yeah, I just want to say, I think it's bad ownership from Stuart Donald. You've got two players on high wages. You've got you've got uh, McGeady, who's not even in any kind of squad at all. And you've got Will Grigg, you know, cost four million or whatever, just can't even get a game or he's not even interested. So to me, it's bad ownership. He's put himself in a situation where he's paying wages out. For two players that probably either one should be in the squad and one shouldn't even be here, or the both should be gone. 
But for me, it's just like you're throwing money away, just left, right, and centre. It's 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 just Stuart Donald all over. It's terrible. Um, right, just very quickly on the chat, um, Harold Dong has called it. Uh, it's apparently Jurassic Parkinson. Uh, doesn't help either, apparently. We like that. And, uh, <laughs> that's a kind of, yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's a good one. That. Uh, well done, uh, well done, Harold Dong. That's a that's a, a classic one. Uh, Michael, um, will Greg has he missed the golden opportunity or what? Yes, if you can't be bothered to. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I do agree with Sean. I did think I know that Tyrone Macken said, yeah, Greg didn't even run for 50 50 balls, but at the same time, he did not have anything to work with. You know, I, I think it's I think we, I think it's pretty fair to say that. One thing I would want to say from Will Greg, and by the way, just a disclaimer before I say this: Charlie White easily deserves to be our number one starting striker in the league at the minute. So let's just get that out of the way and make that crystal clear, so people don't misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm going to say is is, is slightly defensive of Will Greg, and actually I think I am going to criticise Parkinson for this. I think Parkinson, to an extent, is responsible for this because if you know at the start of the season. Scored, I mean, obviously, now, yeah, it's Gates, Ed and Harrogate, but I'm getting tired of writing it off just because of the opposition he scored against. He said, at the end of the day, he started scoring goals in pre-season. Against Hull, where we, where I think we battered Hull, I think we, we absolutely dominated them, but we just didn't, couldn't put a chance away. He has two debatable goals ruled out for one for offside or foul, whatever, whatever the hell it was for. He, he has two goals ruled out unfairly, to, arguably unfairly. Then plays Bristol Rovers. But because he didn't score and didn't shine the world light, oh, all right, I'm just going to drop him and never start. And Parkinson's like, I'll drop him and never start him again. What kind of management's that? What kind of management is actually that? You've just potentially just knocked and destroyed any momentum that Will Grigg had at the start of the season. But because he doesn't score against Bristol Rovers, it's like, no, I'm just going to drop him. Like, and, and in the past, I've seen, and this is when White was off form, I've seen him stick with White constantly, even when he doesn't offer anything. Now, I'm, I'm not wanting Parkinson out, by the way. But I think he does. Deserve, I think I don't think enough people are questioning him on this. Why did you drop Will Grigg just because he didn't do well against Bristol Rovers, even though that was probably one game where hardly anyone turned up that day, and yet Will Grigg was supposed to be the one who got most punishment for that. Now, since then, on based on Saturday, Will Grigg deserves to be nowhere near the Sunderland squad. But I think it's a fair question to ask: Why did why was he dropped after Bristol Rovers when you know hardly anyone else shot in that game, especially considering the whole game and preseason that he had. I think um, it's ridiculous. Right, fair point. Uh, we'll we'll come to you, uh, Dino, after we've uh, uh, gone to Jacob. Jacob? Yeah, building on Michael's point, saying because uh, he started Will Grigg in that first game of the season against Bristol Rovers and then away at Oxford, he dropped him and I think Danny Graham came in. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But I, think it's, did, yeah. I think it's something that is going on behind the scenes. I think it could be a lack of work rate from Will Grigg. There could be an attitude problem. I, I know some fans have touched that. I don't think he's moved up to the area as well. I don't think they believe he's showing enough like faith in the club or like enough commitment to yeah. the club he's playing for. I think it's something to do with that because, like you said, Will Grigg in pre-season, it looked like he changed. You know, he was he, he looked a lot quicker. He looked fitter. He looked like he lost weight. He was getting on the end of balls coming into the box. But after that first game against Bristol Rovers, something's clicked and he can't get back in the team. But it, you've got to give Phil Parkinson the credit. If Charlie White has shown to him that I should be in this yeah. team over Will Grigg, then you've got to give him credit for that because he's done the job Will Grigg hasn't. If it's the attitude thing, fair enough, then. I can't disagree with um, that. All right, uh, Dino, you was trying to get in. Right, I know we're, we're like we all like to criticise a player when they're not playing very well, but there's there's one person who's not really getting much criticism, and I think yesterday's game, I think he deserves a little bit because he hasn't been turning up. I mean, we all like to criticise Power Dobson, uh, White when he wasn't playing very well. Now Greg Graham. But one player who seems to be void of criticism I mean, is Chris Maguire. For me, every time Chris Maguire has played, he's not done. Anything. I mean, I know he yep. scored a penalty and one goal at the start of the season, but since then, he's not done anything. I know Parkinson might be playing him out of position, but nearly every single player in the team is playing out of position. Oh, nine's playing out of position. Flanagan, uh, not Flanagan, sorry. Um, Jack Diamond was playing out of position. Um, Colin McLaughlin is technically playing out of position, even though he's playing well in that position. So, why is Chris Maguire a void of all this criticism? Because he's not done anything either. Well, um, is Maguire not one of those players that thought that can um, 
you know, just do one thing in a game, and that thing yeah. is what wins. But, but, win. but has he done? Has he done that though? No, he hasn't done well, anything. No, but is that not <laughs> what I'm saying? Is is that not why? Is that not, not why he can get away uh, with that? Uh, we'll go back to Jacob. Then we'll come to you, Michael Jacob. I think the only reason Phil Parker, I know he likes to take Chris Maguire off usually around about the 70th minute, 75 minute mark, but I think the only reason. Bill Parkinson really persists in him it is because of his set piece capability. And like Philly said, um, he can do something out of nowhere and like have a long range shot at goal and it will just fly into the net. I think li- between them, him and Lyndon Gooch, I would still rather leave Chris Maguire on going into the last day. But I do agree on Dino's point. He- he's not been playing well this season, but I think it's only because he can like have a long range free kick or like put in a decent cross into the box from a corner. Right, right okay. Uh, Michael, then we'll go to you, uh, Sean. Come on, Michael. I agree with Dino. I think that Chris Maguire is actually escaping quite a bit of criticism in that I think a lot of games at the minute he's going missing. <laughs> and I know that people can say, oh, he's a League One player. Oh, that's the type of thing. You go, well, well, no. You, you, just because he's a League One player doesn't mean you shouldn't expect more of him. You know, like... It, Maguire is capable of it. That's the frustrating thing. In recent times, like against Ipswich, he got taken off because he wasn't playing that well. Um, against Gillingham, obviously he came on and yeah, okay, he scored the penalty. But you know, in any hypothetical scenario, anyone could score a penalty as long as they've got, a, as long as it, it, they get a bit of luck with it. Um, right. Even 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 though it was an important goal at the time, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just trying, Phil, to, get on. Everybody, I'm trying really? to get everybody in, Michael. That's all. We're no, just, go on, go on, uh, go on. Well, go good, on. Sean. Then we'll come to you, Terry. Uh, Sean. Uh, for me, as Daniel just, uh, he's not nailing the head. Miss Chris McGuire has been very, really poor the last few games. Nobody should be undroppable in the, in the team. And if I was the manager, it'd be dropped. <laughs> and end of. He hasn't been playing well, and you can't just leave something in, in a team just because he's got a bit of quality. Yeah, he's been. He does this quite a lot. McGuire, he done it in the first season and the second season. He'll have a little spell where he's brilliant. He scored the goals. He's class. And now suddenly, just like he's not interested, drop him. <clears throat> Simple as that. Uh, right on. Um, mad mistake. Let's remember, Chris Maguire was dropped against Gillingham. He was dropped to the bench. So, Phil Partinson will drop him if he's not playing well. Um, right, so there you go. So, you can't argue with that. Um, right, well, uh, we've got a question from, uh, from, from somebody... Well, you on, can, Dino. <laughs> from uh, somebody, on, somebody on the chat. Um, initially, I mean, I was, I was saying, I was going out the cup, the FA Cup to Mansfield. Of course, I'm, I'm good at any time... Uh, son and lose, but we was never going to win the FA Cup, right? And I think I would be more more gutted going out of the Papa John, Domino's, Burger King, Pizza, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, trophy, uh, because <laughs> the, we could genuinely, mind it would be our luck, we could genuinely get, get to Wembley, get to the final in that. It would be our luck that we get to Wembley, we win that trophy, wow. no fans are allowed there, and I have never seen Sunderland win at Wembley uh, you know, in in thirty <clears throat> odd years and all that, right? And it'd be the one time I'm not allowed to go, and they'd win. So I think I'd be more gutted if we, uh, if we, if we lost that. Um, anyway, um, Mad Mackham on the on the chat has put a question uh, to the panel, saying, uh, "As McFadzine uh, looked mint at left back, uh, what about putting Hume?" Uh, left midfield, go to a back four and give in, give in uh, McFadden the left back role, which uh, Mc, I am right to think McFadden uh, is a left, he, that's, his, that's his position yes. in a left yes, back. So, so what do we think of that, uh, Sean? Straight away, um, Parkinson won't change to, to four no. at the back. He, he, he will stick with three at the back, whether he begins 3 5 2, 3 4 3, 3 1 4 2, he will not go four at the back. So, uh, uh, um, obviously, I admire what you said, mate, and um, it would be worth a try, but it's not going to happen. I mean, if anything, McFadden could um, could get the uh, Denver Humes place. I mean, it's it, it, it's good. That's a good uh, headache to have, like a selection headache. If um, Hume drops out of form, they can bring him in. But McFadden did look, did, did play well. Like, to be fair. Yes, yeah, I, I, I suppose it's uh, it's it's cover for us, and we're having having two left backs uh, do that. I thought you was on countdown for a minute. Then three from the top and four from the middle, and one from the bottom. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> uh, right, uh, Jacob, you was one in there. Yeah, um, it's it's not a bad idea, but I, I really can't see Phil Parkinson doing it. To be honest, I think 
when he plays then Hume, he likes to allow him to have all the space he can on the left hand side if you throw McFanzie into the equation they'll just even though McFanzie I think he, he can do he, he will if he's given more games will do a solid job on that left hand side I think it, it will get to a point where they'll have a lack of communication who will want to over overlap each other more and get the balls into the box. I think right now, Denver Hume on that left in that wing back role. Um, I think that's where he's playing his best. And when Denver Hume first broke into the team, I've never thought I'd say that I thought he was much better playing than a four, but he's developed into this <coughs> naturally gifted wing back at the moment. And, and that's br- brilliant to see. So Denver Hume is a key member of our squad this season. So as a wing back, but not in a four. Right. Um, Okay then. Uh, well, um, where we are on the chat, the casual observer uh, says uh, winning breeds confidence. So regardless of which competition, yeah, you know, there's an argument for that, but also it can be that distraction. Obviously, the number uh, number one priority for us is the league. So um, you know, it's a fair point. But uh, Colin Major says uh, it's not a trophy uh, we would win. Uh, it's free pizza for a year. Uh, apparently, that, uh, which could be uh, Dino. You want it in next? Well, the only way the McFancy and Hume thing would probably work is if you don't put you don't put Hume on the left mid. You've put him as left attacking mid. So do you know how he plays the three four three sometimes, and he has like Wyke, and he'll have uh, Gooch on one side, Maguire on the other. You could either take. Uh, Gooch out maybe or put Gooch on the right and then put uh, Hume on the left because for me Hume's good at going forward fine his crossings might not be the best but I think he's effective at getting past players I think he's got I think he can dribble past players better than Gooch and Maguire it's just his final ball but if he can get past one or two players and commit them he can make space for a strike or even have a shot so maybe that's the only way that would probably work yeah that's um that that makes that makes a lot of sense. That's uh, Dino. Casual observer says uh, uh, play McFad scene uh, with Hume in front of him. Um, so uh, right, we'll go to uh, Terry. You want to be in, and then we'll come back to you, Sean. Yeah, Phil Pattinson's barely got a B uh, sort of plan B. Never mind plan C. There's no way Denver Hume's going that far forward. Like for me, he's going to stick with his his, his other players up there. Uh, right, fair dues. Uh, before we come uh, uh, back to you, Sean, uh, Chris Scott says, what colour shorts have you got on tonight? Pink. Oh. <laughs> you didn't, I, you didn't I, want to show him this, do you? I know. I he's not wearing wearing any. Wearing yeah, he's got shorts on tonight. Got any on? No, he's commando. <laughs> um, uh, which does does take us to that. Um, uh, I was watching uh, the live stream with you on yesterday and there was that threat of, uh, of Sean taking his hat off. Or something for if something well, happened. Safe to, to say that didn't happen. No, but that's only because Sean is actually bald. The the hair <laughs> at the front of the side is actually attached. It's attached to his hat. So when uh, right one, Sean, you was going to say then we'll go to Michael. No, I was just what uh, Jacob was touching on about um, Denver Hume. Um, I understand what he's saying about that he's he sort of made that position. He's he's on this season, um, but he, he was saying that. Do you think that he's 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 he'd be coming all around left wing back, but for me, uh, Denver Hume is he's good going forward, but still for me, he cannot defend save his life. That's mm. my opinion. I think he's um, he's very very vulnerable um, against somebody who's half decent. The, the will the will get the better of him. He's I think he's done well this season going forward. But you watch him his positional sense when when, when there's a counter attack. He's, he's a lot of times he, he ball watches and he gets caught out of position. He gets so he, he goes for, uh, too far forward. Mm-hmm. And he takes that space at the back. Yeah. I think he's he's decent going forward, but for me he's definitely not uh, the, the finished article. Definitely at the back. Right. No way. No. I, I think I'm parking. Tra- oh. Hang on, hang on a sec. I'm trying. I've got my oh. magnifying glass out, then I can see Terry. That's <laughs> all. I'm just like <laughs> right. Go, yeah, go on. Uh, Kind of on, fit, right. Yeah, but I, I think Phil, Phil Parkinson, he, he encourages now Denver Hume to get forward as much as he can because on the flanks, I think he is our most dangerous player. Every time he gets the ball, he's always looking to go forward, forward with it. I understand that as a wing back, you're meant to defend at the same time, but compared to the right hand side, on the left, we just look for. One thing, I think his crossing this season has improved dramatically. I know we criticised him for that a few times last season, but. Um, his first touch, I think, is is brilliant as well. Every time we 
make the through pass, was it the switch passes from the other side? I think that's improved dramatically as well. So Denver Hume, I think over time, it's sort of, he's developed into more of an attacking player than a defensive one, to be honest. But knowing, knowing Phil Parkinson, he, he, he won't change it. He'll keep him as a wing back. And we shouldn't go too much off Callum at Fanzine because he has only played one game, but credit is where it's due. Right. Um, OK, uh, Dino didn't hear any of that because Dino went for a swift paint. Uh, Sean, you're trying to get in. <laughs> Sorry, Dino says, can you invite him back? Uh, yeah, 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 well, yeah, well, I'll do. Uh, Dino, oh, Dino oh. I'll, send, I'll send you another invite, then you can join us back in the room, all right? Uh, oh, you're but... back! <laughs> John, in the net, in the in the net Sean, just went off. In the net just totally went off. Sean, I was just... Uh, I was trying to do it without anybody noticing. <laughs> so, right. Um, right, so, uh, Michael, I forgot what we was on about. Oh, yeah, the... Um, <laughs> Make was, fancy and Hume. Yeah, the Hume, yes. Uh, sorry, Michael, go on. No, it's fine. I thought, uh, you know, it's actually, I'm quite relieved. I thought Dino left because he didn't like work. You know, I thought, I thought <laughs> he was just banned anyway. Right, but, but here's one then. I'll respond to this. With, I, I would give it a go on Tuesday. I think got <clears> Tuesday. <throat> I would, would you guys give it a go on Tuesday, considering both us and Fleetwood are already through? And even if we lose, it's like, whoop-de-doo. We're already through at the knockout stages anyway. If there's any game to try that, it's Tuesday. Mm. Well, I think I think we would all probably agree uh, with that. But at the end of the day, it's down to uh, Parkinson. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, and, he won't do it. Things like, do and it. we're all saying, especially uh, mad mistakes, uh, you know, um, a, a big champion of um, of Dan Neal getting, getting a start. Is Dan Neal going to get a start on Tuesday? You know, surely Probably. if there's any game, if there's any game to put him and Neil Diamond in and what yeah. have you, then <laughs> that's that's when it should Neil be Diamond. done. But will he do it? Um, right, everybody's trying to get back in here. So who had their hand up first? Miss, do you need a look? Do you need a wee? Uh, Jim, <laughs> go on. <laughs> no, I don't need a wee. Um, one, I think definitely Thanks, Phil Parkinson Thanks. should go for on, on Tuesday night because I think. All we want from some of those players, I think Percy, he should put out a team very similar to what started on Saturday and say to those players, I want a big reaction because I think that's the, the most we expect from some of them right now, particularly with some of them being the fringe players and we want them to do the best of their ability to show to the manager why they deserve a place in the team. Do I have a faith they'll do that? No, but one man who I think should be included in the squad, at least from what I've been hearing, he's putting in, fantastic performances for the under 23s recently is Josh Hawks um, he was on the score sheet against Wolverhampton Wanderers um, uh, on the score sheet against Fulham as well uh, I think he played a key part in that Newcastle win as well so if he uh, hopefully he could be involved on Tuesday but it all depends on how Phil Parkinson sets up his team to be honest and Dan Neal as well didn't even get on the pitch on Saturday he deserves some minutes at least well, I think I, th I think it's a uh, you know a massive. I mean, the the, the lads who we've seen play pre-season are having a hard enough time uh, getting into the team without sort of a uh, you know this Hawks kid. I, I I don't know I don't know of him. I've not I've not seen anything of him. But uh, if if the other lads are anything to go by, I wouldn't I wouldn't be holding my breath. Uh, Michael, then we will go to Sean. Well, like I said, like I've said before, when you look at all these youngsters, if they can't if they can't deliver when we're in this division, they're never going to deliver at Sunderland. Unfortunately, it's just the brutal reality. So, for like I said, Parkinson, well, he probably won't do this, but if he had a brain, what he would say is on Tuesday, the likes of Embleton, the likes of Neil, the likes of Diamond, if you can just put a couple, even just a couple of fringy first teamish players in there, and just say to Flea, right, look, pressure is completely off for this game, but. I'm not, but that doesn't mean you can be having a half-hearted performance. The result at the end of the day won't really matter because both of us and Fleetwood are through anyway. But th this this is an ideal game because at least with Saturday, there was there was a potential to go through another round of the cup at stake. Whereas here, we're both already through. So win, lose or draw or lose or win on penalties, it doesn't matter. So that that's what Parkinson should be doing. Will he do it? Well, we'll wait and see. So who knows? Mad Mistake might finally get his dream of Dan Neal starting in the first team in a competitive fixture. We'll see. Um, all right, uh, just very quickly on the chat, uh, Taffy Mackham uh, says, good show, Jacob. Uh, and uh, there's only probably half the panel will get this and the others maybe not. Uh, but the casual observer says, Hawks, I've heard he's the one and only. <laughs> 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 Michael's going, what? 
<laughs> but, I'm going to pretend go. I've got that. Yeah, but... well, yeah, it, it, a bit Doesn't cheesy, but uh, it's a sort of thing uh, we yeah, like on right here. Um, right, so Sean, you was wanting to be in on that? Um, yeah, I think I think Tuesday, uh, like, like as Matt has said, I mean, we've already qualified. I think there shouldn't be much pressure on the game. I mean, to me, I, I don't like to use the phrase, I'm not really bored if we're going to win it. Well, obviously, we want to win the game, but this is a perfect opportunity to play all the youngsters, like Hawks, uh, Emmelton, um, I say he's young, uh, Dan Neal. I think Dan Neal will start on Tuesday. I actually think he'll start on Tuesday. I agree. I think and, he will. And it's, it's it, I mean, the, the fringe players, they've got the chance on uh, Saturday, but they, they really let us down, to be fair. They were, they were like pretty gutless and useless and pathetic, to be fair. But I think on Tuesday, it'll just be a case of playing the youngsters and, you know, just maybe trying another different a different system or something and giving them, you know, give them a try. But I still think, and the dear, this is a competition where, you know, I could potentially win it. But for me, it's, a, it's another distraction. Just it's, it's all about the league. For me, the, the, the big game is next Saturday, the, the MK Dons all the way. I mean, I'm, I'm not bothered. Um, on Tuesday, if, if you know, see, I'm, it's wrong seeing that really. You do want, you to, want, win, the, win, you win. want the performance, but the right. results will be, uh, we're losing on Tuesday, it's not the end of the world, it's, it's about keeping our teams our team fresh and getting ready for Saturday against MK Dons and getting three points. That's the big thing, um, team. right? Okay, uh, back on the uh, on the chat, um, Paul Malcolm tweets and uh, Conrad, our uh, editor, are all uh, trying to uh, explain the joke for you saying Chesney. Down there, Chris Scott said, Hawks, he has an eye for goal. Um, so, Dino, you was wondering? Um, yeah, I totally disagree with uh, Jacob when he says he should play the same team. I don't think he should be playing Power and Dobson in that game because for me, it's an automatic loss. Simple as that. If you play them two in centre of the field, we're not going to create anything and we'll probably end up getting beat if you've got them two in because they don't do anything. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm, and on Tuesday, I disagree with Michael when he says it doesn't matter if we win, lose, or draw. Well, why couldn't that be against uh, Mansfield? Because yeah. going through the next round of cups just another headache as well. So getting beat off Mansfield, I mean, you can't say oh, it doesn't matter about um, Tuesday because we're already through. But um, Saturday it really mattered. But did it really matter the FA Cup? And not like you say, we're not going to win the FA Cup, so it, that doesn't matter. But we can win the Papa John's, Pizza Hut, Domino's, <laughs> Burger King, <laughs> Burger King, <McDonald's. laughs> the, pe- the pizza shop that. Terry goes so, to all videos. So, so I, I do disagree. Belmont Pizza. Belmont Pizza. <laughs> McDonald's. McDonald's. <coughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza. Oh, sorry. I just, I, just don't get how, I just don't get how Saturday is a big issue, but Tuesday is not. Right. Uh, very quick. Every, every, every man in his dog is trying to get in here. Uh, so when we get you in, try and keep it brief because I want to... Uh, oh, here he goes oh, with the fight. Gosh, gosh. Uh, uh, once again, uh, Joanne on the uh, on the chat makes a good point. Uh, can you please give us a thumbs up, uh, like she says? We've only got fifteen likes. I can't see more than that. So give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't like us, especially me, give us the thumbs down. Watch them go up now. Um, so I'm go- I'm going to quickly uh, quickly pass-, pass it around to you. Um, uh, Terry, are you willing to get in there? Go on. I, I completely agree with Sean. I think nobody who starts on Saturday should even be on the bench or even starting on Tuesday night. Not one of those players that should be rested. And I want to give a shout-out to Eddie Phillips. It's his 16th birthday today. He's a good left, left back, decent player, loves the channel, loves my channel. Have a good birthday, mate. Have a good birthday, Eddie Phillips. Eddie Phillips, hey! Happy 16, go on! Woohoo! Happy birthday from the team. Is that it? Are you done? Done. Good lad. Uh, Michael? Okay, my response to Dino is, and I know he's waiting for a bite here. <laughs> All right, okay. At what point did I say that the result was important on Saturday? Because I said, because if, if you remember, I said I wasn't bothered that we were out of the cup. Oh, yeah, you did. You were going off it that we were going out of the cup. Yeah. That is. I said I was unhappy. Okay, yeah. I said I was un- okay. Let's avoid confusion then. I said I was unhappy with the performance, which I think it's safe to say everybody was, but the result didn't bother me. <clears throat> the result didn't bother you. No. Not well, okay. Yeah, yeah, the performance did, but the result didn't. No, it didn't. Right. No. But if we get if we get beat off Fleetwood, you're not going to be bad either. As long as we put in a good performance, not really. The thing is, oh, Michael, if you put in a good performance, you should be winning the game. So if yeah, you put in a good like performance you... and get beat, is that not even worse? Is that not even worse for putting in a good performance and getting beat? Not, is that not I worse? can see, see what yes. you're saying, but sometimes, sometimes <laughs> you put in a good performance and get beat. That's how football works. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Oh, 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 oh,
response all Mega <laughs> one Dino <laughs> nil. Oh dear me. Come on, Dino. Scrappy a scrappy Gosh. win for Michael. I expect, I expect more aggression <laughs> from you. Um, no, 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 don't take my victory away. Don't take my victory uh, away from me. <laughs> uh, right, uh, uh, Jacob, you've been trying to get in for a yeah. while. Keep it brief. Bi- bi- building on Dino's point, how are we saying that we shouldn't start the likes of Power and Dobson on Tuesday night? Is is there a rule in that competition where you have to have, is it five first team players? Is it in this squad I'm starting? Yeah. I'm not well, guess, sure. but, but then stick Luke O'Nine in. Try Luke O'Nine in so that makes do, 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 do they have to start or be in the squad? I, I can't the remember. Squad, in the squad, yeah. oh, in the squad. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Um, right, okay. Is is that everybody on that? Because we, uh, we're we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to get on. <clears throat> I know we um, uh, we're playing Fleetwood on Tuesday in the uh, whatever fast food trophy. Uh-huh. John's trophy. Bell, Bell yeah. Pizza trophy. <laughs> Deliverless. <laughs> if we call it the Deliveroo trophy, then it covers all the uh, covers them all, doesn't it? Um, or just eat somebody say just eat. Um, so we're playing we're playing Fleetwood on Tuesday. No, just um, eat you. It is. It's one of them games. We're already through. So win, lose, or draw. It's 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 it is irrelevant. And you know that is probably <clears throat> the biggest uh, reason. That that Parkinson should should, uh, should try things out because it doesn't even matter. But you want to win every game, though, Philly, don't you? Everyone wants to win every game if we get yes, beat. Exactly. It's yes, World War Two if we get beat. Yes. yes that is true. Right. Like, you and you can't like you it. can't draw in that <laughs> tournament. You can't draw in that uh, trophy in the cup. You can't. You can't. You can't. You're, you're right. You're right. And, and, and yeah, listen, exactly. I I get what you're saying. You, you're dead right that if we lose. You know, if we experiment in that game and we lose, there'll be people coming on here saying, that's it, Parkinson out and this, that, and the other. And we should, like I said, we're through. So this, if, if ever there was a game to, to try things out, it would be Tuesday night against Fleetwood. Um, people are trying to get in again. The, my, my thing was, I was going to mention that and I was going to move on to MK Dons. So literally 30 seconds each if you want in on it. Go on, Jacob. I think uh, frustrations will be high if we get beat on Tuesday because there's a certain man in the dugout for Fleetwood Town who will big this up once again, as he always does, whenever Fleetwood come up against us as his cup final. Just sums the man up, to be honest, that he's um, saying a a game in the Papa John's Trophy is his cup final, and that's Joey Barton. That'll be the main frustration. We we just, I really want to beat that. Right, well, well, Jacob... Jacob, he can have it on Tuesday. We'll we'll have it uh, two weeks later when we when when we play them, you know. So, uh, right, Michael, quickly thirty seconds, then we can try and uh, get oh, on be, to yeah. it. Basically, Wrong. I was going to build up. Basically, I was going to build up. What Jacob, Jacob said. If you want to watch Jacob and me get frustrated, watch us two and Conrad on Tuesday night. There you go. Right. Well, that's what I was going to uh, say before we moved on to that. Uh, we are doing a live stream uh, of the uh, the Fleetwood game. Uh, Conrad, or as it's uh, Michael and Jacob, uh, will be on that. So make sure you tune into that and uh, and watch the lads on there. It'd be far more entertaining than uh, than than sticking any other commentary on, other than the mad mistake. Of course, if the mad mistake's doing one, no. then then, uh, <laughs> then obviously obviously listen to him and then listen to us. Second, oh, but we need, but we need it more than him. Um, right. So quickly then. Uh, on, to, on to Saturday, back to the league game. Uh, Sunderland playing the MK Dons. Um, can we have predictions quick and then uh, we'll, we'll quickly uh, all have a, have a quick uh, quick mention about it. Are we um, not coming on Thursday, like? Me? Are we not doing Thursday? Phil, Phil's oh, not, I don't oh, think. So, oh, oh, so, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll have my prediction and then right. you can do your... Sorry, sorry about that, sorry. I'm just, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> sorry. Well, I'll, I'll go... I'll go three, three, one to Sunderland. So that's uh, no, you I've can't. Got a, have I've that. got a question. I've got a question for Jacob. Yes, go on. Oh. Jacob on the Instagram. What are you doing in the woods? I was on a sun, Sunday afternoon walk with the fam. All oh, right, okay. Oh, that's, that just <laughs> yeah, looks a bit dodgy. That's all, me, brother. Yeah, Locked really. down. <laughs> yeah, you, that's everybody's excuse. Um, <laughs> right. So, so uh, we, well, we are well. You're right. We'll leave MK Dons until Thursday because you can you uh, can discuss that, and because um, uh, we're all back for a, for a Thursday night live. Um, do you want to quickly do Fleetwood um, 
Uh, we're not bothered about it. Do you want to do some Fleetwood predictions? We're not really nah, bothered. I don't Lance think you can says, really predict the Fleetwood game because you don't know what team he's going to pick. Could be anybody, couldn't it? I? It's, I'll make a prediction. Game. Philly. I'll do I'll a prediction. prediction. I was saying, I'll make a prediction. Us to get yeah, annoyed by uh, us to get frustrated and annoyed by Joey Barton in one way or another. <laughs> Something will happen. There you go. Uh, Terry. Two two. Two two. And you, it doesn't you do, really you do know you've got a, you've got a, there's a penalty shootout if it's a draw. Just to let you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, but he's going to be two two. Sean. Uh, two two. And can I see a happy birthday? Happy birthday to uh, my little sister. Uh, I haven't seen it, dear, but uh, it's her birthday. So Olivia. Happy birthday, yeah, happy, birthday, happy, birthday. Happy, birthday. happy birthday, Happy birthday, Because because it's Sean's sister, I think we should have a happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. That's terrible. Happy <laughs> birthday, <laughs> Olivia. You know, I agree. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Olivia. Oh, and, yeah. and Olivia, uh, thanks for all the times you were. Uh, uh, you do the camera uh, as well. You do the filming for um, uh, for sure. Like. Um, right, uh, Jacob, give us a quick uh, a quick prediction. For once, it's not two one. Sunderland three, Fleetwood Town two. Three two. Oh, um, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> do you know how we're going to get one off you? Uh, I'll give you one. Um, I'm oh, one. Oh, 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 there, Dino. Dino, I Dino, I told you to keep it quiet. You just cannot keep that zipped. Can I don't think he was talking oh. to you, actually. Oh, was he not? Oh, right, right, right. Um, oh. I'm, go I'm going to say one nil Fleetwood. <sighs> Uh, oh, oh, right. I got one nil Fleetwood. If we if we're not done, who am I missing here? Uh, Michael, uh, Michael, you haven't done one. Go on, then I'll just Michael, do a random one. Stuff. Fleetwood four, Sunderland three. There you go. I'm gonna go a really crazy game. Why not? Four, three, Fleetwood. Because I'm not going can put three against Fleetwood. <laughs> you know, that's how football works. That, that's football, football yeah. Football, that's football is bizarre. I'll go for a one. I'll go for a one nil Sunderland win. It's it's. it's you say Fleetwood? Eh? You say Fleetwood win? I did not say Fleetwood. No, you said man, you know, <laughs> didn't you? How That's you, man? you, Dino. You said one nil Fleetwood. God. Uh, right then. Uh, well, that just about wraps it up on a Sunday night. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can join us uh, for a live stream. Uh, the Fleetwood game on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. That's Jacob. with Jacob, um, Jacob, Michael, and uh, Conrad are going to be doing that. Uh, the lads will be back on Thursday. That uh, Sean, are you at work? Uh, you know, oh, you're not away. So you're oh, that's, uh, so you're. I'm Grafton. I'm at work from Grafton. Yeah, you're at work. Grafton. All right. Yeah. So um, Conrad uh, will be on uh, with the lads, and we'll have a special guest on uh, instead of. Uh, instead of Sean, so I'll speak to the lads about that after and we'll see where, who we're getting on. So join us uh, on Tuesday for the live stream, uh, back on Thursday for Thursday Night Live, and then uh, and then we'll see you all back here. 5,000. Uh, for, for the 5, Sunday. But, oh, yes, and Michael. That, that. Michael is so close uh, to 2,000 subscribers uh, on his channel. Uh, please, if you can you just go there now? Uh, search Michael Bowers on yeah. YouTube. Go there now. Subscribe. Let's get Michael. All right for on two thousand subscribers. And here for five thousand. And here uh, for five thousand as well. Absolutely. Right. Good man. Good man. Uh, that's it from myself, we Philly. From Jacob Kirkbride. From Michael Bowers. From uh, Sean Middleton. From Dino. And from the Mad Mistake. Uh, we will see you all in the week. Uh, look after yourself and stay safe. We'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye.